Welcome back to another episode of Reese Think Real Estate, folks. Today, we have the pleasure of having Jess Lenovo on. Now, I've probably gotten Jess's last name a little wrong. I know it's French from the way that she speaks about her husband in the episode, but Jess is, uh, I think, one of the training pioneers within real estate and certainly from a future perspective is that the reason that we've gotten Jess on the podcast is that she really dives in from a training perspective for real estate around a lot of the aspects that Chris and I definitely believe from the social touch points of keeping up with your database and and along the lines of social media um, in order to build a real estate business. Now that says we don't dive into a great deal of that today. We really dive into a little bit more of her story. We talk about some of the uh, some of the things that she, she sees in the industry um, and some of the changes that she made in her life. Um, a great uh, a great story around a life change of where they live. Um, but I really enjoyed connecting with Jess um, and certainly encourage you guys to check out what she has to offer. Uh, hope you enjoy the episode. Hopefully it's helpful. Welcome to Rethink Real Estate. My name is Ben Brady, and this is a real estate podcast aimed to deliver sales strategies, marketing tips, and business insights from industry experts and myself to build a listing-focused business for the future. Let's get into it. Jess, welcome to Rethink Real Estate. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm thoroughly excited about this because you just dropped a bomb on on me. You live in the Bahamas. I do live in the Bahamas. I live on a small island in the Bahamas called Eleuthera. Oh, so tell me, walk me through the decision to go from yeah. Toronto to to Bahamas. Well, anybody who has spent a winter in Toronto, <laughs> I think, doesn't really need the walkthrough. But I met my husband 13 years ago. Okay. And we went on our, I think, fifth date or fourth date. We went to Jamaica together. Oh. And we kind of fell in love on that trip. And we always said, we are going to live somewhere with palm trees one day. <laughs> and I think that in theory, we weren't really sure where that was going to be. But then in 20, 2020, yeah, I guess it was 2020, we bought the forever home in Toronto. It was 7,000 square feet on one floor. Like we started gutting it. It had an indoor pool. And my husband kept trying to figure out where he was putting these potted palm trees. <laughs> and so he just, he was like, I want a hundred palm trees in this house. And I remember thinking like, I feel like we're doing this wrong. <laughs> I feel like we're going about this the wrong way. So we really started seriously thinking about where we would go. Now, we looked at everything from Thailand to Bali to like every Caribbean island. And we settled on the Bahamas for a couple of reasons. Um, okay. One of them is if you've ever been to the Bahamas, the water here is like unmatched other than in like the Maldives. What are we talking? Are we talking like clarity, color, or warmth? Both, all. Okay, all. So all. Like, it's like like you can see the bottom. It's like turquoise and clear, and it's warm. There's no. I just want to. I just, I want to put it over here. I, I want to double click on that for a second. So we're from Australia originally. Gold Coast um, yep. is just down the road from Brisbane. You know, it's it's warm waters, beautiful beaches. Yep. And you come to California and because we live in Newport Beach and, and you're like, oh, this place is, you know, this is supposed to be a dream. The beaches suck. It's gritty, dirty sand and the water's freezing cold. Yeah. Yeah. That's why. That, so, the, so that was reason number one for choosing the Bahamas as a, like as a country. Um, two was proximity to my to get home. So I'm a two and a half hour direct flight to my mom. In Toronto? Yeah. It's, it, it's two and a half hours? Two and a half to two and three quarters. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I didn't realize. So that. And then um, we are tax free in the country of the Bahamas. <laughs> cha ching. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cha ching. Okay, cool. All right, gotcha. So, all right, so that makes a great deal of sense then. But let's talk, let's, let's revert this back to a little bit of real estate now because yeah. here you are sitting in Toronto as an incredibly successful real estate person. Um, and and you're, you're sort of in a transition phase of your life at the moment from a career perspective or like talk to me about what you're doing at the moment because you're in Bahamas, you're not selling real estate anymore. You know, let's let's do the elevator pitch on Jess and from a professional yeah. perspective. Yeah, I mean, I started, so I founded the Listings Lab, which is our like training company in 28, the beginning of 2018. 
so, rock solid name. Just like just as so name good, as far right? as names go, just so good. Chosen out of three that were written on a napkin, but the, give me the, the other list, two. Are you allowed to give I me the other two? Remember. No, I don't even <laughs> remember what the other two were. I showed okay, okay. it to three people, and all three people were like, "That's it." So, so that's what we ran with. But, um, yeah. So I stopped selling. I stopped actively selling real estate as an agent in twenty seven. The end of twenty seventeen. So twenty seventeen was my last like active selling year. Um, founded the listings lab a- in the beginning of twenty eighteen and moved to L A. I moved to Venice Beach for mm-hmm. six months. At the time, that was really where all the like course creators, uh, business trainers, like everyone was kind of like there was a hub there. Now they all live in Austin, Texas. But uh, but but at the time, like that was that was kind of the, like the place to be. So I moved there for six months so that I could kind of immerse myself in that world because I had 15 years of real estate experience and zero years of training experience. So uh, I we knew that we wanted to make that transition. And I built our programs to be the programs that I wish that I'd had. That as an agent, these were all the things that I really struggled with finding. So we built them, and uh, I guess the rest is history. We yeah we scaled them up, and um, and then in twenty, I guess we've been here for two years. So I guess it was like twenty twenty one. We finally made the move here. So so the the thing that I first of all I love the 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 nature of picking up and moving to the area that actually has palm trees versus importing the palm trees into your house. I love that story. <laughs> I love the fact that, you know, you've been and done this in the, from a real estate perspective and you've yeah. gone down the path of trying to trying to you know, sort of provoke the industry in order to give it what you believe it missed. Yeah. And I like that. There's some real genuine genuine approach to that. But I think that I think the the skill set that you're teaching people is probably the most important skill set when it comes to I'm gonna take your name literally. And the listing lab is obviously something that you're the listing side of the business is there's a clear focus on that. Obviously you guys offer a lot more stuff, but totally. but realist but realistically, as far as a listing focused business, that's awesome. But you talk about there's this one thing and you just said the word scalability, and I wanna sort of lean into that in the first degree of this. You talk about um, unlimited scalability in your business. Yeah. That's one of the biggest traps that I see for realtors in the sense that they re- like their business revolves around them. Don't get me wrong, I'm a product of that problem as well. I think that our business would be far more uh, would be far more extensive if you know I wasn't a control freak and I didn't have to be everything and blah 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 blah. You know, yeah. scalability I think is every, is scalability is something that I think is it's spoken about a hell of a lot in real estate, but it's definitely I don't believe implemented. And Absolutely. if it is implemented, it's this. I said this on a podcast a couple of months ago, Jess, so I want you to give me your opinion of this. I feel like real estate's going in the wrong direction with this though. People are taking scalability too literally and they're trying to get themselves so far away, not even arm's length, like miles length away from the transaction where the realtor or the head of their business is basically nowhere near the transaction, which I think that we need to give as an industry ourselves a check. But leading into the actual question, tell me or, 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 or give me an overview of this unlimited scalability that you talk about. So I have always said people get into real estate for three reasons. We want to be able to make more than we were making at whatever we were doing before, or this idea of like not having an income ceiling. We feel like we want to be able to control our calendars or have freedom of schedule. And we want to help people. Mm -hmm. Now, the reality of 99% of people in real estate is they actually don't have the first two because they become the bottleneck of their business. Absolutely. Every single thing in their business, single threads through them. And so they lose, you know, they become the income ceiling and then they lose the ability to actually have freedom of time because in real estate, I don't know where this came from, but we are the most reactive human beings. (laughs) And I, I opened my book. So I wrote a book in tw- uh, 2021, maybe. Is it it's called, stuck at six figures? Is that the one? No, it's called More Money, Less Hustle. Oh, More Money, Less Hustle. What's the one stuck at six figures? Like, again, I don't want to lead you off the, uh, down, down a path, that's, but I see that there. Like, that's kind of like an ebook. So it's it's, oh, it's, okay. it's, it's the Listings Lab methodology. It's, it's, it's like a 21 page thing. But I yeah. actually wrote like a full book. And I opened the book with like what we call the spaghetti incident. Okay. Which is me in early, really early on in my marriage, sitting at a 
restaurant at date night. And I had the most manual business in the world, but I was pushing and hustling and scaling and doing the things. And um, we're sitting at dinner and my phone's ringing and it's buzzing and it's buzzing and it's buzzing. And I like literally I'm trying so hard to like pay attention to my husband and I can't because I'm I, my phone's ringing and my phone's ringing. And so without even thinking about it, I had like this moment that like my brain shut down and I spit the spaghetti that was in my mouth into my napkin. And I picked up my phone and I walked away from the table. <laughs> and that was for me like a really big turning point because I walked back into the restaurant and anybody who knows me, I am absolutely unequivocally obsessed with my husband. Like hmm. he is like, like the wind beneath my wings. No, and- I'm sorry. Sorry. Just so we can make reference. <laughs> Eve, Eve Lunavelle, um, very French name. So like Eve, uh-huh. like Eve Saint Laurent. I was about. Oh, um, sorry. I thought you. So so sorry. I I thought you cut out. I was like, did she say Steve? No. no it's Eve. 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 Yeah. yeah. So Eve, like Eve Saint Laurent. Um, oh. And he, his face when I walked back into that restaurant was like, oh, yeah, like this is just my life now, right? Um, that was the turning point for me. Of I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this. I'm 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 sacrificing the things that actually really matter to me for money. Mm. And not even like I wasn't even able to you know I got so busy at one point that I wasn't even able to like use the money. Because like all I did all the time was work and so I ended up spending money on things that I didn't even really want like cars and clothes and bags and stuff. So you can see, you'll, you'll, you see the transition now where I live on a small island in the Bahamas where like, there's no store here to buy socks. <laughs> really? hundred percent. Like, that's great. So, so, you know, it's, it, I think I really got my priorities in check and that's really where I actually started thinking about the scalability of my business and how I could make more but also make sure that I had was prioritizing the things that actually mattered to me. Okay. So um, Ben Hardy, Benjamin Hardy has this, uh, this process. No, sorry. It's not Benjamin Hardy. It's uh, it's Tim Ferriss. Has oh, this yeah. Process. I love Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss is. Yeah. Yeah. So Tim Ferriss is, is like greatest of all time. Um, Tim Ferriss has this concept of eliminate, automate, delegate. Hmm. So what I started doing is, you know, I, I discovered the Eisenhower matrix. This was a long time ago, but I started actually categorizing every single thing that I did in my business. So is that, is that the Eisenhower? Talk to me about that. I don't know what that is. The Eisenhower matrix. It basically categorizes things into your zone of genius Mm -hmm. and then things that you're good at, but you know, you, you like, you like, and you're good at things that you love that you're good at things that you, that you're good at, but you don't like, and then things that you're bad at and you don't like. Okay. Okay. And so I started like actually thinking about what I was spending my time on and the values associated with what I was spending my time on. Hmm. Was this a, a $20 an hour job? Was this a thousand dollar an hour job? So I started really looking at everything in my business, started looking at tech that was available, now, I'm a really big believer that things in real estate are always like 15 years behind. So I started going to other service-based businesses, the, you know, the training and coaching industry being one of them, yep. and looking at how people were running those businesses and how they were scaling those businesses. And I started bringing some of the theory, some of the tech, some of it back into my real estate business and tried to figure out how to make it more scalable. So, I mean... If there's one thing that I'm really good at first, it's marketing. I'm a marketer first. So the the actual generation of business was never the problem. What makes you a good marketer, in your opinion? Um, I think I've become obsessed with it. And I think that I understand and have learned and spent the time to learn human behavior Mm -hmm. and the human psychology. Everything that we teach in the Listings Lab is how to get someone from complete stranger to inbound client. So from your perspective, early days, getting obsessed with learning, you know, the psychology of people, what would you say was one of the leading things to 
getting a better grasp of the psychology in people. Like what's a what's a leading thing that if someone's listening here going, hey, I really, I, I think I'm a good marketer, but I don't really have a good understanding of the human psychology. Where yeah. do you start to find more out? So I don't think that you can be a good marketer without a good understanding of human psychology. Fair enough. Because I think most people in real estate who think that they're good bar- marketers are, in my opinion, bad marketers because they're Fair enough. everything around them like a billboard. Absolutely. And that's extremely old school. Say, like we're not selling vacuums door to door anymore. And if you want to create an inbound relationship or someone or you want to create attraction marketing, the basis of all of that is emotion. People make decisions emotionally before they make them logically. And really good marketing and really good attraction marketing isn't about your ideal client or your ideal customer understanding you. Mm. It's about your ideal customer feeling understood by you. So a lot of it comes down to, are you putting the right things in front of this person to feel that human connection? And then are you, are you also able to back those things up with logic? So it's the emotion first and then the logic. And whether it's online or on social media or through paid traffic, it doesn't matter. The evolution of a human relationship is the same. Right. And the emotional like depth of how you actually facilitate that, that, that growth of a relationship is the same. So I think that learning that early on and also using the tools that are actually available. I built my business in 2005 on Facebook when it was a wall. And it was a classified section. I forgot about the wall. I forgot about the wall. The wall. It, was a wall. <laughs> it was a wall. It was a wall and it was a classified section and, and, and some direct messenger. And this is before there was, you know, ad manager, before like Meta had any of that. And that's where, because I'm naturally quite introverted and the brokerage that I was at that was like, okay. You need to cold call and door knock and flyer and and billboard and you need to network. And and I was like, that is like literally my worst nightmare. That's it. This is a really good point, Jess, that I want to lean into a little bit here because you saying that you don't come across as somebody that is an introvert. You have a you've got your own company, you're building it to be the face of that company. You're ultimately trying to scale your business. You've got a lot of self-confidence here. You're doing a podcast with me. You speak incredibly well about things. Talk to me about the closet introvert. (laughs) <laughs> that is listening to this really um, that, that when they're told to cold call, when they're told to do all of these yeah. things, you know, how did you deal with that? How did you like, obviously this is what you're about to get into, yeah. Yeah. but like, how did you battle through that? Because I'm sure that you didn't just go, no, nah, I'm going to do it this way. I'm sure that there was an element of like, well, hang on, all of these successful people are telling me to do this. Yeah. I might have to give this a go. And you might've dipped your toe into the awkward pool. And then, yeah. I tried. I got chased down a driveway once. <laughs> I knocked on some old guy's door and he chased me down the driveway and, and I, I was ending every day of quote unquote prospecting absolutely exhausted and unhappy. And I don't think that introversion necessarily means that like you aren't personable. Mm. I think that what it means is that you spent, expel a lot of energy with having to my my team calls it Jess has peopled too much today right so like Jess Jess is Jess is peopled too much is that right out today (laughs) so so you know for me like that I expend a lot of energy that way and so I had to figure out a way where I could be consistent and I could build something that actually made sense now everybody was also telling me I was 21 at the time And everyone was always saying, it's your sphere, it's your sphere, it's your sphere. And I grew up with a mom in real estate. My mom's been in real estate for 35 years. Right. So um, I was 21. I looked about 16. (laughs) And everyone was like, work your sphere. I was like, first of all, my friends are not buying real estate. I agree. (laughs) Uh, And, you know, my sphere, anybody else around me who is, are they going to choose me? who's 21 and just got my license, or are they going to choose my mom who is 30 years older than me and has 20 years of real estate experience? It's, it's such a great point that I think that a lot of people that are new in the industry just get led down a path of because, you know, it's the same thing. I got into real estate when I'm 18. That's when you can get your license yeah. in, in Australia. And realistically, when they say to you, use your sphere and, you know, all of those things, like you just said, regardless is that 
if you do use your sphere, like I, I, I have this conversation sometimes with new agents that come within our network and then people that we're, we're operating with. It's like, what type of legacy do you have with your sphere? Because if you were previously, um, I don't know, I can't think of anything, stacking shelves at Ralph's, the grocery yeah. store, yeah. and now you're going to give them advice about their real estate. I'm sorry, there's a bit of legacy there that probably is not good. Or if you've been the drunken kid at their <laughs> party that ultimately you they had to – pick you up and put them, put you to bed. They were like, we'll probably, do you home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. probably not going to list their house with you. So, so again, I think that that's something that a lot of people lead into that's a bit awkward. <laughs> and I, and I couldn't agree more. And I looked at my situation and thought, okay, I, I understand in theory what everyone is saying, but this is not working for me. Mm. And so I had to figure out my own way. I used to call it prospecting for my PJs because I could sit on my couch in my pajamas by myself and I could have conversations and I could give value and I could do this and build this relationship in a way that felt, it felt good and it felt authentic to me. And so that's really what made how- it, What made it feel authentic, Jess? What made it feel authentic? I almost feel like to a certain extent I could hide a little bit huh. and I could lead with how much I knew because I knew a lot. I grew up in the industry. Yep. So I knew a lot. And then I, and so often like I would get to a certain point with people where I would meet them in person. And the first question they would ask me is how old are you? Mm. Because I did, I looked really young, but what was coming out of my mouth or what the conversations that we had had leading up to that had given them enough confidence that it was okay. Yep. So, you know, fast forward, I just continued to use technology and digital platforms in a way that a lot of people weren't. I think okay. that the way that I think 95% of people in real estate don't know how to run Facebook ads. Yep. And that, you know, then people come to me every day and they're like, I tried Facebook ads. They don't work for me. Yep. And my first question to them is Nike runs Facebook ads. And big billion dollar companies run Facebook ads. Do you think that it's that Facebook ads don't work for you? Or do you think that it's that you don't know how to work Facebook ads? And I think that there people will take like a $97 Facebook ads course on how to boost a picture of their business card and they'll do that and they'll spend 30 bucks and then not get anything from it and think, Oh, that's a wash. Can, can I ask a question then on that? Because we spend a lot of time, we're talking about the passive nurturement of your already existing database to yes. constantly be in front of using. So like, I, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in getting rid of the mailer that you mail out that you don't have any data on. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I'm, I'm a big believer in let's put those people into an audience. Once you yep. have a good enough size audience yep. within social media and passively target them through, through some way, shape or form. But, mm -hmm. but I, there's a, there's this part of this that I see this disconnect when I explain this to people where they go, well, can't I just have someone else do that? And I think that's the problem yeah. is they outsource the work. Even some of them have their internal team do it, but but yeah. I still think that's a little bit too disconnected is that some of them outsource it to people that don't understand real estate at all. Well, nobody, like basically what you're doing is you're outsourcing. Would you send one of your team members to go and have dinner with your husband or wife? <laughs> that's good. The answer is no, but that no. is very good way of putting it. That's great. But it's, but it's exactly the same thing because what you're doing is you're outsourcing the voice. Of <laughs> Jess, I'm, uh, just just so you know, I plagiarize anything that comes onto my podcast. Okay, that, <laughs> that is now mine. You've probably used it a million times before, but I'm going to say never said it before. So that is good. that is remarkable. <laughs> that's good. Anyway, sorry. No, but it's so true, and, and it's. I would rather that you outsource the delivery in your business before you outs outsource the marketing, mm. before you outsource like being that like the brand is the energy and the embodiment and the, the, you know, the tone and everything that is you that makes you magnetic. That is your brand. And I think that agents go about it the wrong way. Right. I could be so so that this is something that I think a lot of people don't think about. 
I had a really big real estate business when I sold real estate. We did, you know, I had a, sm a small, lean, highly scalable team. We did several hundred deals a year. Mm. And the reason, I'll put it this way. Was I the best agent in my market? Absolutely not. Was I one of the best marketers? Yes. And is that fair? Theoretically, no. But you can be the best agent in your market and, and still not have the business that you deserve because oh. you're not the best marketer. Let's let's use let's let's use this, and I, I'm sure you will agree with me, or maybe maybe we don't need to be overly public about this. But let's take all the million dollar listing people that are on TV and the Oppenheimers and whatever it may be. Yeah. I, I I've met, I've stolen listings off them. They are useless as far as I realtors go. Yeah. But again, they've got the biggest marketing platform in the world from a TV perspective. Yes. You know, like th there's a prime example of that. Yes. And 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 it's true. So the way that I think about this is I, the, the mindset shift there where I went from a low six figure agent to a multi seven figure agent was I stopped looking at myself as a real estate agent and I started looking at myself as a marketer. Mm. I was a marketing company that sold real estate. And that was what really changed the way that I approached things and what I did. Mm. And then from there, we got so busy that then I had to work on the systems and work on the automations and make sure that the delivery was really sound. And, and you know, I, th I also think that there's this element of the way that people do things in real estate that's broken. I've always said I would rather have two people on my team doing 50 deals a year than have 10 people on my team doing 10 deals a year. Hmm. And there's two reasons for it. One is it's super easy for me to, to handle and manage two people. It's much harder for me to handle and manage and train and, and be head of culture for 10 people, you know, and the P the, the element of mastery that's going to come from those two people doing 50 deals in terms of what they actually do and, and how they represent me is mm -hmm. going to be a lot better for the person who's doing volume and who is constantly in their craft, as opposed to someone who is may be struggling financially because they're only doing 10. It's a, it's, it's real estate's in an interesting place. I, I see that there's a lot of focus around teams yes. and I see that it's the wrong focus around teams in a lot of cases as well. Yes. People are building a team because of the sake it's of ego. saying that I want a team. It's Say ego. again. It's ego. Oh, there's a yeah. lot of like big ego based teams or people who are burnt out and they're building teams because they're burnt out. Right because they they can't continue at the pace that because they've waited too long to actually build the structure of a real business and they're too their 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 personal brand is too deep into that business that if they've started too late yep. there's just the, like I'm thinking about a gentleman that we operate with at the moment on the coast of California he could never build a team because his brand is him it's, it's him. not it, yeah <laughs> This is something that we fundamentally teach the opposite of in the listings lab. We help people build a service package, a signature system, a signature process, which is positioned as the getter of results in your business. Mm. Because if Ben is magic, and if Ben is the only person who can deliver a service this way, and he is the business, then no one else is Ben. And so every single person who comes in through marketing, through referrals, whatever, only wants to work with you and feels passed off. Now, if you position, which is the like, if you position a methodology or a signature system as something that's trademarked and is your unique value proposition, is the service package that you're selling, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter if you deliver it or Samantha delivers it. It becomes something that people are bought into that and then it allows you also from a system standpoint to create standard operating procedures and automations that also deliver that service at an even better standard than that individual agent would, would be able to deliver it alone. So every part of your business becomes better and it becomes more scalable. Yeah. A interesting question for you is 
because you've gone through the process now, you stopped selling in 2017. You've obviously now gone through and built a training company, which goes through all of these things within real estate based mm-hmm. on what you've done. But I'm sure there's obviously a great deal of new learning that goes along as you step away and you experience new people and you see the yeah. growth of other people's business. I, you know, listening to listening to something the other day, it was a reminder to me is that you know, you, once you do something, you become relatively good at it. Okay. Then you you then go down the path of then having to teach it to somebody, you become even better. A hundred percent. Do you have have any desire of going back to Toronto or going back into another marketplace and doing real estate again after you've done your journey through the listing lab or, or I I don't know, what's the end game here for you, Jess? Like, is Um, there, Well, I mean, I have a team of 17 now. Okay. Um, and we have, I, you know, at any one time, we have 5,000 people in our programs. Right, so, right. So um, probably not. My, our, our core program is also lifetime access. Okay. So, you know, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, are, you the, are you the head when it comes to content creation? Um, I create, yes. So I'm still the face and the brand, but I am not the delivery. Sure. Um, so sure. I'm, you know, the way that our that our, our current business is structured, like I sit in the seat of visionary. Yep. Kara Lee is my COO. And your integrator. So, and my integrator. Mm. And um, we have, you know, we have our finance department. We have each, each of our programs has have different coaching departments. Right. So that they're based on their skill set. Um, I want to talk about listing lab. Let's talk about your, yeah, what yeah, you're doing right. and everything like that. Sure. Because again, I don't want to, I feel worn out when it comes to real estate training. And I really enjoyed when I got introduced to you, um, that, that, you know, yours was a fresh approach. It was a fresh mm-hmm. person also. And I'm going to say this with the, with the risk of, um, being completely, uh, cannibalized by a lot of people, but I love the fact that you're a female in the training world. I think that's so important. I've often said that women are the better real estate agents slash realtors in the world because they actually have the ability to deliver news that isn't favorable and it not be about ego, it not being about dominance. Like, don't get me wrong, not everyone. I think women are better salespeople. No question. Absolutely no question in my mind. And I I thoroughly agree with that. Um, But but the the thing that like I'm worn out on the Tom Ferries, the Mike Ferries, the, you know, the Brian Buffinis of the world. Like don't they've had their time but, but also it's sort of like they're so disconnected from where it ultimately is, which is in the living room or, mm. or, or, or running that business. Like, don't get me wrong, they're coaching people and all that stuff, but I just feel a little worn out with it all. I, I, I you know, I, I think that that's fair. Um, now, we actually, we have some new, newer people on our team that have come mm. from them. Sure. Um, and when I ask them, why do you want to be here? It's always, I want to be somewhere that's innovating. Sure. I want to be somewhere that, you know, we can have an idea and it doesn't take 16 months Hmm. to get it out there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so, so talk to me about the programs and talk to me about what you, what you guys offer. I'd love to, I'd love to hear that a little bit more. For sure. So, um, we have a couple different levels of programming based on the agent. So it started out as just the listings lab. Um, and we scaled the listings lab up to, you know, several, you know, a thousand people, several, several hundred to a thousand people a year kind of coming into that program. Now that program is marketing. Mm. It is attraction marketing, organic and paid traffic. But a hundred percent of that is geared towards getting that psychological journey built out from stranger to client. So how are you taking people, whether it's on organic social media platforms, whether it's through paid traffic, um, and building out all of that marketing, all of that messaging, all of the positioning. And and I'm a really big believer that your brand is not the colors and logos and fonts that you use. I really don't care what your colors and logos and fonts look like as long as it doesn't look like you did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I, and, and I think that so many people spend waste so much money on these visual rebrands, and then they don't understand why they don't get an ROI on it, which ultimately Mm. doesn't make sense. Your brand is what people think and say about you when you're not in the room. And so that's really what we craft in, in that, in that, in that program. 
Now, the goal of all of this is that we want to get you to a seven figure business through digital marketing. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't teach mailers. I don't teach like I don't teach anything that is considered old school. 100 percent of what we do is is digital, Um, including all of the physical and digital assets that you need in your business from, you know, your listing presentations to, you know, what you're sending out to your lead magnets to like the whole thing, your product. So that's the listings lab. Um, and then we that from there, we then built out our accelerated agent program, which is only organic. And it's for people who aren't ready to run paid traffic. Right. Now, we differentiate that for people who are, you know, people who are under six figures. Right. Someone who's making $60,000 a year should yep. not be spending $1,000 a month on ads. Fair enough. Right. So um, I'm also a really big believer that if you're not getting too... I would say three to 10 deals a month organically, you're not ready to run paid traffic because your message is embedded. Got it. So so then we have the accelerated agent that is for people under six figures. Now, what ended up happening is people were so successful within the listings lab that then they got to a point where they were like, okay, I need to build teams. I need to hire. I need systems. I need all of these things because the marketing is working. Yep. So we built out our seven-figure agent program, which is, which is essentially like our only program that's not lifetime access. Okay. Now that program is a lot more hands-on. We're a lot more in people's businesses with them. It is systems, automations, team and hiring, uh, but basically like building the unlimited scalability, which we talked about, um, so that you can continue to grow and continue to scale and build the business that you want. We have people yeah. in that program. I think that there's so many programs out there that build people's businesses in one idea of what success looks like. And every single individual is different, has different strengths and different weaknesses and different visions for what they want for their lives. So what we do in that program is, yes, okay, the systems are for the most part going to be the same. doesn't matter if you are building to sell or you're building because you want to have an eight figure business and be the dancing bear. The, the, the actual structure of the systems are going to be the same, right? So there's certain things that like, yes, we have and like we can help people build, but the intention of these programs is that we're building your idea of what success looks like. And so I think that that's something that like makes us a little bit different. That's unique in the sense that what you think success looks like. I'm sure that there's this journey, Jess, that you take a lot of people on that have these unobstructed view, well, excuse me, these obstructed views of what success is supposed to look like. Like I want a Porsche, I want a this, I want a that. Yeah. And, and you probably got to help them. a lot of those people. <laughs> so I think that like, I'm very much like authentically me. Okay, and good. I think that I don't necessarily attract the, like, I want to show my ex-wife that I can get a, have a Maserati type. <laughs> like that's, that's just not who resonates with me. That definitely is a box like that you've yeah. checked it off in yeah. your business plan. I don't want to attract that person. <laughs> no. And, 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 and I just naturally don't. I think that I attract the kind of people who are, you know, wanting to be there for their kids' hockey games. Right. You know, and that, that want to be able to, you know, live life in a very full, very fun way. Because, I mean, a whole bunch of my content is me frolicking, frolicking on the beach with my husband and, you know, you know, living what I teach. Yeah. Well, I think you've you've expressed that with the move to the Bahamas. But, exactly. you know, it, it, it's funny, though, like it's it's interesting to see leaders of companies get pissed off for lack of better terminology. Like I've, I found myself doing this very early on is that you have these offices and you have these agents and you, you create these environments and you do these certain things for these agents and they don't turn out, turn up. They're never there. They feel like they never work and all, and you take it to the point of like, Oh, well, if they just worked harder, they could do more or they could have more, but maybe they are just happy with the way that it works. And sometimes you've got to lean out rather than lean in and just realize that they're probably the reason they get into real estate is the anonymity that it provides and hey they're doing it better than you are (laughs) and yeah and and again like what one person wants is not going to be happy and fulfilling for what someone else wants Mm. i think that you know we have people who come into the the listings lab you know build a six hundred thousand dollar a year business and they're like i'm good i'm just gonna like do this for the next 10 years yeah. And then we have other people who are like, okay, so I've hit this. How do I get to from here to here and buy back the time? 
I really, uh, I love so many people fall in love with creating content in our programs that then they're like, I just literally want to create content all day. They're like, I want to be like the dancing bear. And like, I want to like, I want to be the, the, the brand. And I want to, I want to build a team of really awesome people who love the client facing stuff. Yeah. Great. Yeah. It can you look know, however it's... you want it to look. We also have people who are building to sell, right? Yeah. They're like, Hey, I got, I've got three or four years left in this. And I don't want to be one of those agents who just like their business dies when they retire or they never retire. I want to actually build something that is that has a valuation and is saleable, which databases are not anymore. Yeah. So yeah. then we look at intellectual property and systems and, you know, team and like and, and we look at the entire package in terms of what would someone actually buy and put a value on. Final sort of wrap up to this. Yes. Um, so that we leave people with a little bit more research to do on you and your company and, oh. and everything like that. And I, I um, real estate's in an interesting and a tricky time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, constantly I'm getting asked the questions around, hey, what do you think is going to happen with this whole buy side thing? And, yeah. you know, we come, from a, we come from a country where there is no buy side commission yeah. anyway, you know, and if a buyer wants to be represented by somebody, they have to pay out of their own pocket. And that's mm -hmm. how, just to be clear, the rest of the world pretty much works yep. outside of North America. Yep. Um, I know Canada went through, you know, the the whole co-brokering thing. I know that this might have been just more specifically British Columbia where- It was just British, British Columbia. Yeah, yeah, yeah with the-, with the you couldn't um, – so one, the fee is lower um, for cooperating brokerage mm -hmm. um, fee, but then also then you couldn't even have somebody represent in the same office. So you can't you know, double end somebody. it. Yeah. yeah, you can't double end it. So I, I've not, it's gone through that. But where do you see this going? Because at the moment I'm telling people that, you know, I see this process like AI is that it's moving so quickly that, you know, by the time you grab it and you start focusing on one thing, you've already, you, you, you're already behind. Um I think that you've I just got to let it settle. I think it's great because yeah. so I've been saying this for years. Standard commissions are silly yeah. because in every market, in every industry, in every product, there is Walmart and there's Chanel. Mm. And in today's day and age, Walmart and Chanel are being paid the same thing. Or agents are upset because so-and-so is discounting. And I think that where this is going to go is that people have to validate. There's no standard commission. People have to create a product that is actually highly valuable, which yep. usually is going to mean specialized. And that they're going to have to justify what they're charging, which I don't think is a bad thing. And I think that, yes, you're going to have your agents out there that have a service package that's one point. And then yep. you're going to have the agent who like really has a full service type of Chanel product, for lack of a better way of explaining it, that can charge 3%. Sure. And there's go also going to be people who want a deal. And then there's also going to be people who, honestly, the people who buy Chanel bags, you can buy a bag from Walmart and your phone's not going to fall out of it. You can buy <laughs> a bag from Chanel and your phone's not going to fall out of it. The people who are going to, to pay for that 3% package are the same people who are going to pay for a Chanel bag that actually functional, functionally does the same thing. So I think what we're actually going to see is we're going to see more of a traditional, more of a traditional type experience-based pricing structure. Yeah, I think that that to not overcomplicate it, Jess, I think that you've summed it up beautifully. Yeah. Um, I guess that, you know, outside of that, you know, if I was in the stage of planning my business to do it differently, mm -hmm. I'm listening to this podcast and I'm thinking about all the stuff that you've just said and I'm going, hey, look, I'm not doing it right. They're having the spaghetti moment at the table with the husband and all the stuff. Yep. Um, or they're probably getting ready to gear it up and they want to do it right and they want to make it sustainable and they want to make it a, an unlimited scalable business. Yep. Um where do I start outside of going to the listing lab and starting to communicate with you? Where do I, where do I start? What is I mean, the, what's the first book, place? Yeah. I think there's two, there's two places that you can start. My book, um, it's on Amazon. There's also an audio book. If you can manage to listen to my book. What was the title? What was the title? One more time. Uh, more money, less hustle, becoming a seven figure real estate agent. Beautiful. Okay. So there's the book. And then I guess the only, the other thing that I would say is, um, just find me on social media. 
Yeah. Like yeah, great. Instagram is just at Jess Linovell. Yeah. And we'll link all of that stuff. I appreciate all the time that you've given us on Rethink Real Estate, Jess, and looking forward to hopefully getting you back on and continuing to philosophize about real estate and also just checking on how the Bahamas life is going. Oh, it's, I I guarantee you it's going to be just great. (laughs) Wonderful. Thanks again. Thanks. So about 75% of our audience hasn't liked, followed, or subscribed to our podcast. It would mean the world to us and it would help this podcast more than you know to expand our reach if you were to like, follow or subscribe on any of the platforms that you're watching or listening on. Thanks again.